what if we kissed in the debug menu? <laughs> ah. 63%. I feel like I've been getting 10% done per episode. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I'm six episodes. Yeah, this is episode seven. I'm like just ahead of getting 10%. I'm slightly ahead of getting 10% done per episode. That's a pretty good rate. Maybe. I don't know. Feels vaguely satisfying. No idea if it's a good rate. I haven't played the fucking game before. Uh, all right. Up, left, down, right, left, down. So yeah, it's, it's just the D-pad directions adding a block in this order. Then they extend outward to indicate that, it's, that there's a second left and a second down. So up, left, down, right, left, down. We'll hang out and explore this video game and whatever level this one is, I guess. But then we'll pivot back to the other one to actually test my playtesting, because that's the one I actually have the script for, not this one. Pretty sure with that, yeah, the uh, the one I found the bug debug menu thing for stuff, the bug log for was the library. This is something else, presumably. Uh. What's this level shaped like? Okay. Woof. Okay. This is rough to look at because you can't see what the other pieces of the maze look like. That's not, I said that weirdly. You can't easily differentiate the paths from the gaps between them because they're all the same color. There's no shading. So, like, the part we're in right now looks like it'd be the wall of a maze, not the actual maze. Anyway, I guess this is door one. Oh, this isn't so bad. I thought I'd have to figure out what door one goes to, but no, there's just a door one. It's just, it's just the number one, and there's a door on both sides. So each of these is just a pair of doors that match each other. And in the case of eight, it's pretty redundant because it's, it's a door between two pieces of the same area. Okay, then for for now, my goal then is to just explore each zone one by one for NPCs and dollars. Because why not pick up some dollars? Camera does make it harder to tell what direction I'm facing. Let's loop around this little block here. It's funny because the environment and the characters are so monochrome. And there's only one shock of surprise color, which is the floor. But then all the jiggling textures reveal green and other textures, other colors. So like the outside world, the background behind the world is actually full of colors. And you keep getting glimpses of it with every bit of the Z fighting or whatever it's called. I don't think it's called Z fighting. I forget what the what the, the PlayStation problem is called. Because I think Z fighting is when two different textures are overlapping and they freak out and it alternates between them. Whereas like PlayStation One just had a weird wobble to it that is recreated aesthetically in fun ways. Although I do think that basically every video game that ever recreates it exaggerates it to, to a fair amount. Like, I feel like it never looked quite like this originally, especially with how much it's moving when I'm standing still. I think you usually had to, the camera had to be moving for it to be freaking out like that. You keep remembering this hallway as a maze, but not the right one. Uh. Okay, every time I talk to him again, it freaks out again. Oh. Now he's me, doing the same pose. Crash. CD2. Let's see. Uh, magician. 
hallway CD2. Alright, at some point I'll learn what this code is, but I did, it, I did it backwards here. This is my first time causing one of the crashes myself. Not my first time seeing one of the weird behaviors, because we definitely caused the T-posing to happen in the first one. I just didn't know yet that that was a thing that might matter. And we're back, bitches. Alright, back to door two, and we'll just try to loop around and be consistent. First trip is explorative, second trip is... the... bugs. I say despite having triggered a bug already. And also, I'm still exploring, and this is technically my second trip. You know what, don't worry about it, it's fine! Think what I say, not what I do that I... D d d d d this is a whole in a self-isolated, separate little pocket, so let's not deal with that yet. Focus on these other spaces for now. You got American dollars. I've got all kinds of dollars. They say that the dollars are in my soul, whoa, 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 baby. The dollars gave me heartworm. I have minutes to live. He's pointing now. Now kiss. He should have been remembered over there. So they're keep implying that this that I'm remembering these places and that's causing the the these places to exist functionally. And her role always seems to be to point out the inconsistency. Like there's something that I remembered wrong each time. And she's here to always point out what that is. I guess I might as well check out this hallway, then loop back up to here, then go through the north half of everything. I, I imagine that one of the bugs is to use these doors in a specific order. Or if it's not one of the bugs, it might be a code you input at some point for puzzle-solving reasons. I was born too soon, and you were born too late. The eight door is the weirdest part. It's very weird because it just loops to the other side of the same room. Alright, well, we got a dollar out of this, I guess. I want to go back to four. The side effect that this is happening, that this is having, is it's making me just want to go back and play another tank controls shooter, Resident Evil clone. There's a few different games inspired by the Resident Evil, the original Resident Evils that I could get to, that I'd like to get to at some point. But there's also just like the other half of Resident Evil 1. I only played the Jill campaign, which is pretty long. I could go back and play the Chris campaign. Ideally, what you do is you learn the game by playing one of the campaigns, then go back and play the other campaign afterwards, and it's way faster that way. Which is what happened when I got around to Resident Evil 2 Remake shortly afterwards. But I didn't do that with the first Resident Evil Remake, which means I won't be able to run on, on memory. I could play it again off-camera to refresh myself. But that's its own big old time investment. Let's see. 
He's dressed pretty much like what we're used to. He has a purse. How am I getting dollars out of video games? I say as if the surrounding game had that much logical consistency to begin with. The entire world and maze and thing we're living through itself being an art installation that we made apparently but we're also solving that has been corrupted or adapted by a madman. All right, well, that's, I got a few dollars and that was both the NPCs. That's probably it for now. Somewhere around here, there'll be a debug menu that'll give me more to go on. On some level, I think about the witness sometimes with this game. It's funny because people compared it up, up front. People kept saying like, isn't that game like the witness? And I was like, is it like the witness? I don't really see any comparisons to make with the witness in between the gameplay styles. Like it's a, this is like a Metroidvania-ish thing. I can't call it a Metroidvania because you are physically unlocking stuff. Or at least, it, uh, I guess it's a Metroid. No, yeah, it's not a Metroidvania because you're not just learning. A Metroidvania is like a Metroidvania, except every time you unlock, learn how to unlock all these different new things, it's because you learned, uh a new mechanic that was technically there all along. And you're like, what? Whereas a Metroidvania, you get new power-ups and you get new abilities and things that you do that. Instead of a, instead of abilities, you just learn new things. And you're like, wait! Akin to, a, bit, a little bit akin to how Steven's Sausage Roll, which does not necessarily work that way, like, as a, in its world layout necessarily, has its own way of being like, hey, by the way, there was insane mechanics this whole time. You just didn't know they were there. Oh, hey, buddy. It's one of the really fun things about Steven Sausage Rolls, the way that it'll just blindside you with the knowledge that, like, hey, this isn't, there's a bunch of crazy shit you could do this whole time. I guess you kind of can't save either, which is rude. Unless you really escape him or something. But yeah, while you're playing Steven Sausage Roll, you just periodically get blindsided by, wait, I can do that with the sausage or the fork? Wait, wait, this was on the table? And admittedly, the past levels that didn't use that mechanic were less likely to enable you to encounter it, but there usually was a chance to encounter it accidentally early and even employ it in a weird way in an earlier puzzle. You'd be like, wait, wait. And those kinds of whoa moments are what makes it a metro metro brainy is what they are. Whereas this game has so many locks and keys and so much of the stuff is physically just information that you find elsewhere and you use once. It's just not applicable in the same way. But I, I just think of this game as a giant escape room, basically. But when I compare it to The Witness, it's just the fact that, like, in The Witness, the thing you're playing is itself a big art installation slash experiment slash simulation that was created to get an effect out of its players. And it's and it was, it was, it was there to serve a purpose. And so similarly, we seem to be inside of a piece of software that itself contains other pieces of software. And all of these are somehow the maze that I made, but it's somehow also able to trap me despite being the one that made it, seemingly because this guy's chaotic and messes with things and changes things, which might even textually be part of the game. Like he might have, the character I'm encountering with in the game might itself be an AI that my character wrote to make my own puzzle something that I would have to solve by becoming an antagonist that changes things or something. I don't know. I'm unpacking some ideas here. Obviously, I don't know exactly what the conclusion of this thing is going to be, but there's weird layers going on, and ultimately the, the layer of the game we're physically playing most of the time itself doesn't make sense either, let alone all the simulations you go in deeper in. And on some level, I'm, I'm reminded of simulation theory. Specifically one of the counter arguments against it, which is funny because it came up in one of my video essays and then I deleted it because I'm like this is too off-topic and, and annoying. That essay's not come out yet, but it probably won't have the simulation theory chapter because I didn't like it anymore. But there's a really annoying theory that people say that if simulation, if simulated realities exist, then there's going to be a bunch of them. So statistically, we must be in it. We're more likely to be in a 
uh, simulation than in the real world, because there'd be more stimulations than real worlds, and it's just like, okay, man, cool argument, bro. You invented a pure hypothetical where the hypothetical mathematically proves itself to be more likely than the reality, so therefore the hypothetical's true now. Wow, it's real deep, it makes you think. It's like, all of the logic of the thing is built into the thing you said, so it's just kind of annoying. But if you want to argue about things and get a little, get a little teleporter problem maybe about it and just have some fun with, like, thinking too much about the dumb made-up hypothetical, uh, one thing that is, that does seem kind of interesting is that, like, there is only so much physical matter in the world and a pure, complete simulation of everything you think about it, like, it, it's not just like, like in a video game, you're just like, oh, this is polygons or whatever. But our reality, if we are a simulation, has data all the way down to molecules and it, hyper specific interactions on incredibly small scales and all this other stuff. And it's all while also being an impossibly huge universe. So when you think about that, it kind of makes sense intuitively that like this, the, the computer simulating things has to be so complex that it can contain all of that data and simulate all that data but that inherently our seems to be the seems to present a situation where whatever world is being simulated would itself be less complex than the world simulating it like a computer will on some level make something that is less detailed and less granular than reality and if there are infinite simulations as proposed by this dumb argument then each simulation within a simulation will be making a simulation that is increasingly undetailed and unrefined. And on that level, I just kind of find it noteworthy that in this game, we're inside we're inside of some kind of game, seemingly, in the uh, when we're on the top layer. But then the next layer down is all is also another video game or simulation, but each one gets less sophisticated and less uh, has less fidelity. The point where we have we have a PS1 game and we have like an Atari game basically or, or a NES game like we the older games look like they're practically the equivalent of like playing the original Gauntlet and so that increase that that's, it's interesting seeing that mirror there of the increasing the decreasing detail as you go deeper I'm not super committed to that theory as far as like the real world goes because I don't I don't know but there's something there's something that does also feel intuitive about the idea of like yeah, if a computer did try to simulate a reality, like all of it, by its very na nature of ha how many atoms there are on the universe and so on, it sure seems like the thing being simulated would be less, have less data, be less complex than, than the layer that was simulating it. And so every subsequent layer would get less detail, less fidelity. Anyway, just kind of on my own planet here. There's an envelope under the, the counter. There's three hashtags, not ha hash marks, either chalked or clawed into the back. She's on the phone, but looks like she's dropping it. Like she's startled. She's drawing a red maze that looks like it might be the exact one that occurs throughout this game. Journal du Sud. Res Renzo Nero report le gros jackpot au club rouge. Uh, the top has a little file and a bigger container, two books, a scale, a lamp. The scale is competing, is comparing, I think it's a pawn and a king from chess against a key. There's a plant, a magnifying, ga ma magnifying glass, cup. An inkwell with a feather, another book, two drawers are open, four drawers are open, four drawers, three books, newspaper, red pen, trash can, anything in the trash can to inspect? I don't think my camera will let me look in the trash. I can't look, I can't turn the camera, I can just walk around and see where it lets me look. Magnifying glass, scale, king and pawn, three books, four drawers. It's 
magnifying glass. It's always tough trying to remember, trying to think what they might ask me. Very well. How many drawers were open? I sure hope I'm right. Four. Right? This matches our information, Fraulein. Okay. Interior, hotel, reception office, night. The woman waits nervously by the phone. Suddenly, it rings. The woman answers. Operator. The other end is available. Thank you. There's a switching sound. Producer. Bob here. Mr. Sidney, I'm sorry to bother you. I'm a bit worried about the project. Who is this? I'm, wor I'm working with Mr. Nero on the third eye. Silence. Hello? Did you not receive the letter? No. That's unfortunate. Where are you now? I'm at the hotel. What's going on? Long silence. To someone else in the room. She's there now. What does legal say? There's another inaudible voice. Get out. Now. A pistol shot is heard. The woman drops the phone. Rut row. Yeah, there was a message at the very beginning of the game that was like, we do not associate with Nero or something like that. Which seemed to essentially indicate like, no, don't do like, like this whole thing might be false. And there's the follow up there. Pain to script page. Mr. Nero, do you have news for me? I didn't click on the computer correctly. So we don't have the debug for this. I can go to the other computer. I can go to the other uh, video game console and try that one out. If I can remember where it was. Uh, pop, 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 pop. No video game consoles on this screen. I'm currently there, so that video game console icon is the one I'm using. Floor 3. It's probably that one, for the one from Floor 3. Ah, and that's the one-way door that I've not been able to figure out. So I take the elevator to floor three. That's not too hard to figure out. Which is different from walking into floor three normally. Uh, have I done everything here? One-way door. Art. Door. Yeah, I'm not sure there's anything else to do. Room 1973. Do I have the key for that one yet? I have more keys than before. I have the C-shaped key. It was tied to a brick and thrown into the window on the second floor. It has visible signs of wear. Shaped like the letter C. Between the cuts, there are finely ground dark brown particles. The condition dates the key to mid-1900s. The usual, the unusual shape of the key could hint at the establishment and unlocks, as such aesthetic connections were not uncommon from the 1940s to 1960s. A key to a pharmacy would have been shaped like the letter P, for instance, judging by the aroma and pigment of the particles. They are roasted Arabica plant seeds. That's a coffee. C for coffee or cafe. Oh, I can finally go there. Cool. There we go. I can finally go to the goddamn coffee place. And teasing me with this place all game. They're pretty good at it. They're pretty good at making places memorable that you haven't even been to yet. Just like a cafe stands out. You're like, okay, how do I get to the cafe? I gotta get there at some point, right? They're gonna let me in? 
Let me in, please. Please. There we go. Okay, so up, then back. I'm getting more lost than ever a lot of the time because we've we've rapidly expanded our setting. So I, at this point, just really struggle to even tell how these places connect anymore. Okay. Bug report three. Let's see here. So, bug report one. Gamma. Delta. Theta. E. Three. Five. Five. C. Two. Nine. Seven. B. Bug report two. Don't know what any of those are yet. Bug report three. And this one's going to be Psi by Sigma. Phi and Sigma. There's a haunting from the past. All right, I've made a whole new page just for these since we have a lot of notes to take and I did not have enough space because it was just it was just mashed in with some of the, the previous stuff. All right, Psy. Talk to the woman, then walk backwards to the passage by her. And each one of these each one of these will cause me to crash. So there's no reason to read the other ones because I can check them afterwards and go in with a, go in each time with a different mission. The woman was the one in the top right. I should check my notes, but I don't think they put the books in my memories. I'd like it if they did, because then I could read them in order. But generally speaking, it just sounds like there's a... I think I vaguely got a story about like the end of the world and this holy art being almost like the last chance for the world. But everyone was dying in the process. Uh, and maybe even kind of being killed by each other. In fact, yeah, explicitly so. Her face had looked like it had a hole for a second. These are strange books to remember. Oh, these are strange books to remember. I thought she said there are strange books to remember. All right, that one's easy. That is F96. It says film game scripts over there, but the bug reports are actually in documents, not games. Why? The shelf behind the magician does not have any assigned collision. This will result in the player character being able to reach an out-of-bounds space. Walking through passage 2014 will, will crash the software. Oh, passage 2, door 01, passage 4. Passage 2, door 0, door 1, passage 4. 2014 passage door door passage 2014 we'll see how well I can remember this startup sequence The magician's in the bottom left. It's a bit of a roundabout way to get there. So I'm pretty sure the top left is the guy with the gun. 
Looks like all of our bug reports are tied to character locations this time. There we go. I can just clip through this wall. Uh huh. Okay, so it's just numbers anyway. Do I remember though? 2014, I think. I hope. I don't remember. Two. Zero. One. Four. Okay. Eighty-eight E. So they were kind of full of it when they were talking, going door passage and stuff. I guess they maybe they maybe were just like I don't know. Maybe they technically are different passages, but might as well just been door. All the way through. It feels like they're just trying to use adjectives to spice up their code report. Interacting with the man with the gun and leaving the software on dialogue screen for 30 seconds will result in unexpected strings. When returning from the dialogue screen, player animation is broken. Trying to leave the room will result in a crash. Okay, so this one's, this one's easy. I wonder what it'll say, though. Here we go. Just head straight up to the back, then turn left. I should be able to find him. So he should be like right back here, actually, right? Yep, I remember you. You were not meant to remember me in this library. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good enough, I guess. Uh. Uh. A deep fried egg. <laughs> okay. A lot of text came at us that might say interesting things, but I don't know how to... Technically, I have a video of it, so... Uh. I could investigate what it said. Maybe I'll do that. Let's see. 81B. Not bad. Hmm. Yeah, let's see. I could cut this recording, let it process, and then I could open it back up, and we could try to see what just got spammed at us just now, because I don't think it's going to be in our memories or anything. The game doesn't necessarily expect us to read it, but I have the power. Thousands of years ago in the Indonesian cave, the third eye blinked and we spirited away. We stole the deep egg to, le to lay in the Italian chamber. We desired three seeds for the deep egg. We descended through the quiz club and we knew the first seed was beyond. We found the first seed with eyes not real, and it had been nothing since it was a baby owl. Then we descended through the Prussian forest and beyond the trees, and the second seed found us. 
An imagined headgear appeared from which the seed had grown. All it knew was its magic show for no one. What? <laughs> A voice echoed from the Italian chamber. It drew us to the third seed. The voice whispered, Man cannot destroy alone. A woman with laser eyes must join me. Okay. <laughs> the third seed wore the foretold laser eyes. Unlike the first and second, she was more than nothing. So we're the third sea. seed. Seemingly. The deep egg was filled with three seeds. He, we laid the deep egg in the Italian chamber. And then we're back here, and that's when I, when I glitched out and things got weird. So, <laughs> enjoy parsing that if you'd like. The woman with laser eyes. I love how the insane sentence, a woman with laser eyes, just pops up throughout, like that's normal. Anyway, I have three pages to turn in, because he keeps coming at me while I'm do doing other things. So now I've got three more to hand back in. And then we can go back to seeing if I... Know what else to do in some of these cases? Was my, were my eyes just freaking out again? Already? Here, chill game. Let me at least turn these ones in. So we're at page eight. We're getting pretty late in the process, too. I haven't quite determined if, there, if a scroll bar or what shows up. But considering that you seem to be allowed to just not turn these in and it'll keep coming at you, it seems you just can... Uh, end up with just an inventory that's just packed with them. I am still kind of avoiding the old lady. Just not entirely sure what to do to unpack her stuff, but I figured the more place I more of this place I open up, the easier her answers will be to find when the time comes. At the very least, I'm not stuck yet. There's there's still other things to do. Oh, that's downstairs. Whoops. I meant to just go back because I realized that I probably need to go around if I want to get to the cafe. Yep. Open says me. There's something satisfying about how every time you open a new door, there's usually a phonograph right behind it, so you can immediately just start the music and kind of feel cool. Like you're bringing music with you, bringing art. A cafe, just what we need. Signorina. Please, take a seat. Ah. Like black magic flowing through your veins. It makes you think faster. Did you know Americans dilute it with more water? Have you heard about the Black Arts Coffee Club? I hear that they may have struck a deal with this hotel. For a small fee, members get unlimited coffee. Unlimited espresso, senorina. It sounds like sunshine on a Wednesday. Why not give them a call? 35 67 10 Thirty-five, sixty-seven, ten.
wrote it right next to my my uh, video game phone number. Life is short, Signorina. Only the fast carpenter catches the best wood. That's not what that. Those words don't mean anything. I have to run. Uh huh. The Black Arts Coffee Club. Well, they were nice enough to add it to my stuff, at least. Two different shortcuts in here. 19. Do, 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 do. Uh... What is the number hidden behind the black bar? 1691, 1961, 1881, something 09. My first instinct is that the nine and six switch with each other. Sure. But then it's 1881 and it's like, what? The most, thing, the most I can think of is that it's about symmetry. Like we did rotational symmetry of sorts to get from six to nine to 96. 1881 is symmetrical across when the ones aren't serifed I mean you can flip over in 1881 and it'd be like an amber I think it's an ambergram is what it's called when you flipped over and it stays the same so based on that I figure that the number on the left might be 60 or 90 is my guess I'll try 60 and 90 and see if either of those do anything otherwise I'm not really sure what they're going for with this one it's 60. So it was about symmetry. Weird. <laughs> this is finally us outside by the dead woman. That's this door. That led to the cafe this whole time. We have another locked door down here. This one's number eight. Can I maintain my success rate? I only have two that I haven't solved yet. But I've found. What is... <laughs> what is square square diamond? Minus square diamond square. Plus diamond square. Huh? Hmm? You ever think about that? The fuck is happening? So I assume that every diamond is, is the same number and every square is the same number. So one number happens three times, and another happen number happens three times. What else is on the board? Uh, there's three zeros. Two eights, two nines, two ones, one six. What are the rules? What are the rules? What are the rules? I don't know. I was thinking maybe it's like all the columns and rows have to add up to the same thing. But one of the rows, one of the columns is 0, 0, 0, 1, so that seems not true. Blah, 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 blah. What the fuck? I mean, I've had to make some leaps in logic for some of these other doors, so I guess I can see that's not crazy for it to be kind of unfair or weird, but like, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be looking at here. Some of these, I feel like you're maybe supposed to like recognize it from like a real life type of puzzle. 
But then some of them are just like, in, I don't know, I just kind of intuit some of these. Like this one's a 90 degree angle and a 45 degree angle plus each other equals 135. Ta-da! So that means the L is 90. Then you have this one where I'm like, the fuck? I think my that might be my weak spot, huh? I have like a shared weak spot where I just can't interpret when they just hit me with like, I don't know man, it's a bunch of shapes, good luck. Figure out the shapes, bro, it's easy. And then I'm just like, what am I looking at? Somebody help me. <laughs> There's a, or like, I, I, I said that backwards, didn't I? Say one thing, think another, say gibberish in the, in the process. Oh my goodness. Can you find the hidden number? Uh, we'll get to you when I get here, I guess, but I, I'm guessing... I see three... in the middle right. Do I need just that number or a four-digit number? I don't know. There's a number of things that look like they're fours sideways. There's a few other threes and fours everywhere. Oh, I see a two. Or a five. They all have to be in a row somewhere. We'll get to that when I find the door, if I do. Anyway, yeah, the ones that are just like a series of numbers, I really have trouble parsing. But the ones that are usually like, what? what's the shape? What's its deal? I'm like, oh yeah. Then there's whatever this is. I don't even... I don't... know what we're going for here. What's E-H? <laughs> What's 8-T? But they could be symmetry- oh, is it also a symmetry puzzle? Oh, Well, now that I'm in that frame of mind... The left is the top half, and the right is the bottom half, but it's mirrored with itself. That's why it's symmetrical. So you need to take the top half of EH and the bottom half of 8T to get the number. Basically. So 6... 4. 64. Puzzle number 17 is 64. Uh... Door 1764. Because the E, the top half of the E and the bottom half of the 8 make a 6. And the top half of the H and the bottom half of the, I guess I'm calling it a T, make a 4. Yeah. Okay. I know what that one is now. So what's up with this one? <laughs> It's easy. You just you just like squint. You're like, oh, I get it. I don't know. Here's the question. Uh, can I find door 17 again? <laughs> Does the game tell me what numbers the doors are that I've found so far? It, I think it adds the SC to your map when you find it, but it doesn't add right what it is. I think it's that by the by the horse in the top right corner. I feel like that. Might be the first door I could not open. So it's like above... It's like above the chapel. Well, it's like two floors above the chapel. Anyway, I don't, I don't think I can even immediately access that area, and we're here right now, so... Let's see what I can find besides the shortcuts in, in, in and out of this place. An American dollar! Wow, did you hear that they put water in their coffee? Just put my tampon in the espresso machine. Yep, they don't. Yeah, it doesn't take dollars. It take you gotta you gotta get a cup. I've never had an espresso before. Not I've had shots of espresso in things. I've never just like had an espresso in a tiny cup. In some ways, it seems more convenient because coffee, being this big mug of hot stuff, like it takes so long to cool down. So like it feels like an espresso would cool down much faster and be more convenient to drink. I guess the shortcut that takes me outside is actually the easiest way to get where I'm thinking of going. Do, 
We'll figure you out, you fucker. That's the puzzle that scares me the most so far, is whatever's going on with the statues, because I just don't know what I'm looking at. And like, at some point, I have to do it, right? It was back downstairs. Whoops. It is important that we simply keep saving. I'm disoriented. Oh, it's in the back hallway. I was kind of forget about that space. Nope, oh, this is the other side of the library, wrong spot. I still haven't done the moon thing, right? Fuck. I'm on the wrong side of the fucking door. Uh... The irony of wanting to open up a shortcut so much that I take a bunch of long routes over and over again. All to unlock a shortcut that I might never use. I said 64. Yeah! Alright. That's one more of you done. I don't know how many shortcuts that is, but it's got it's... I was gonna say it's gotta be more than half, but I'm pretty sure I confirmed it was more than half like five shortcuts ago, so we might be really close, actually. So we have a moon phases puzzle. I'm, I'm supposed to do five moon phases in a sequence. When the third eye passes us by, the world belongs to creators. It's a time for beauty and chaos. An artist will be crowned king, and he will lead our way to over, Ma uh, lead our victory over Mammon. He will create items of great beauty, and for a fleeting moment, there will be harmony in chaos. But order will be restored, and knights of the third eye end in blood. Artists will die or surrender to the merchants. Mammon will not be denied. But artifacts of these knights will remain among us. Alright. So one of the lunar phases of 1847. So I need five dates from 1847, basically. And then I can input a code based on what the moon was like that day. If I remember correctly, 1847 is on the other side because I thought about using one of the books. We can't reach it. Apparently more stories about to happen at me. This is just... This is such an odd system, where he just kind of comes at me periodically. Story time! And I'm like, did I even do anything since last time? Number nine. 
we have a few details that we cannot seem to get right. Try to remember, Fraulein. And cross out door 17. That's definitely solved. Just one last thing to think about. And my unnecessary error code tables that I've moved now. Okay. So I imagine she's trying to leave now. This is the front of the building. He shot, apparently. So this over here is the room that he was locking himself in at the beginning. Uh, there's three apples. A glass. Two... Things that hold four candles. A chandelier. That's hard to look at, but it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight candles on it. There's a fez and some scissors hanging from the coat rack. There's one, two, three, four, five keys. Four up here and one on the floor. A suitcase down there, one letter, two letters, a clipboard, a mug, a book. Three suitcases, one behind, two in front. She's trying to open the book. Nothing stands out about her appearance right now. He's got a gun and black sunglasses. Maybe not sunglasses. Seems like sunglasses. And there's no indication of what he shot. Scissors and Fez, three suitcases. Scissors and Fez, three suitcases, five keys, two letters. Very well. How many suitcases were there in the scene? Three. Right. This matches our information, Fraulein. Interior hotel, reception, lobby, night. The woman hyperventilates. The bullet has barely missed her head. She panics and makes her way out to the lobby. As she opens the door, the man is standing there. She's wear he's wearing sunglasses. He lowers his smoking revolver. Senorina, thank God I can't see shit in these glasses. I thought you were someone else. One of them. That could have ended horribly. Thank God I can't see shit in these glasses. Oh, because you missed, not because you misidentified her. The man laughs. Anyway, you will be glad to hear that I have developed an entirely new philosophy for motion pictures. And yes, art in general. I... Art must be set free from the tyranny of the beholder. We're releasing it back into space. We're putting on the greatest show that the world has never seen, Signorina. Oh, who are you calling? Was it the magician? Is he telling lies about me? No, I, I had to call my aunt. She's... Was it the Americans? No, I... I have to work. Oh, I'm keeping you. Let's walk and talk. The woman walks fast, and the man strolls beside her. Everyone has a part to play in the revolution. Rudy lacks artistic talent, so he will be Minister of Defense. Do you agree, Signorina? The dog? Yes, uh, Minister of Defense. Signorina, please be serious. Rudy is a Labrador. He does not have the stomach for warfare. <laughs> The woman tries to find her way out of the hotel, but the man blocks her way by always running in front of her. Signorina, please be serious. We are under siege. The atomic bomb? Very beautiful, but instrumental. They use it politically, a cardinal sin. The woman hurries away. The man rushes after, continuing the conversation. As you know, the man, the maze, is a weapon of mass destruction. An endless ride for fascists and critics. The bumper cars have been permanently closed because of a collision. 
Sabotage, Signorina, sabotage. The man suddenly grabs the woman's arm. Who was on the phone? Was it Sydney? Did he tell you lies about the My Magic show? No, I... Forgive me, Signorina. Here I talk and talk. What I wanted to tell you is that I, was w I am waiting for you upstairs. I look serious, so you might want to go check. The woman studies his face in terror. She notices red stains on his cheek. He hurries away. The woman stands and listens as he runs away. She sneaks back to the main entrance. She pushes the door. It's locked. You panic. You run through the corridors, pulling handles of every door. They're all locked. You turn at every corner, check all the windows. Locked as well. You w will run up and downstairs and panic. You will find yourself in my room. I am not there. I haven't been there this entire time. I am in the real 1963. That was wild. I guess that's the end of this sequence. Not only that we were here under false pretenses and that we were not we weren't supposed to come here and that he's crazy and and, and dangerous, but also that apparently even in whatever this retelling is or whatever's happening right now, this new version of the story, we're acknowledging the fact that he's the man and I'm the woman in the story. And the the terminology just changes just changed on the fly to you and I. So that's exciting. Are you excited? Okay, so the shortcuts I've opened will allow me to go... ...follow a much more comprehensible path here. Because I would like to investigate... ...the library. The lunar phases. Now that I'm remembering it again. Or get sidetracked again by getting interrupted by that. Eighteen forty-seven. Okay. I feel like I grabbed eighteen forty-seven and did something at the time too. Okay, so it's just it's stuck in the shelf. I think this caused something at the time. I think this was a, a, technically a puzzle solution. But, like, sure, it did something. I think it might have made that wall in the back over there open or something. But I still don't know. I need, still need information about 1847 so I can figure out the lunar phases. Because that journal's still locked. Why can't I open 1847? There's some red marks here. I need more information, please. I don't know what to do. Anyway, let's go let's go to the scary room. I mean, much like the promise of being shot at some point that happened early on, I am always nervous that something might end the game early, but puzzle games are usually good about not doing that. I imagine I'm not gonna like randomly end the game by turning in this page and having the door probably open. To find my script pages. Slide them under the door. I cannot thank you enough, Signorina. Come in, Signorina. That's a skeleton. Call him about skeleton. Right. I forgot he gave me his number and I'm supposed to call him periodically. That's funny.
There's so many fucking pages. Probably gonna be reading all these, but I figure I should at least get them and try to grab them so I can see what order they are in or something. Seems like a nightmare. Another red window. Real or painted this time, since that's apparently a thing that happens. I hope I got them all. And his eyes freaking out. Um. The right eye. Is that one of my laser eyes? How's this work? Oh, another American dollar. I believe I have these ones already. This cabinet. I don't feel the need to stop the music. And this is number one. Okay, so he's been dead this whole time, but I can't really definitively say what that means because he's clearly been interacting with us throughout. Like he's given us stuff. But I mean, we, yeah, we could be interacting with the memory of him on some level. Because something traumatic happened here in our past, if we assuming we are the woman in the stories. We could be revisiting this place where he is already dead now. But then that, that means that means a lot of actions throughout this whole thing are non-literal, and that's a lot to unpack. Dr. S. C. Bolt, born in 1949. It's the book author of this book. Fuck. Someone's gonna be. I'm gonna get comments about that one, aren't I? Reminds me of uh, Return of the Oberdin and me forgetting the, that about the author written on the first page and how that was one of the identities of one of the characters. So that I just like left. It's like, oh, I don't know who that is for so long, and I'm like, hang on a minute. Director of the Puzzle Association of Denmark. Those puzzles have been published. Yep. Shortcut. Dr. S.C. Bolt. Yep, that's them. So we need to find the... Let's see. So I, I I believe I did the five course with wine answer, but I don't think I found the guy who asked for the tombstones. Or maybe I just lost track of that one. But now we have this date, at least. Alright, anyway. Ugh. This might be one of those things where every section adds up to the same amount. Okay, that, there's an easy start. The top left is 13 plus 87, which is 100. 76 plus 11 is 87. Plus 7 is 94. Plus 6 is 100. Okay, they all, they all equal 100. So, Y minus X will equal all of the stuff added up in the X, in X's area Besides it, functionally, yeah. 32 plus 18 is 50, plus 16 is 66, plus 4 is 70, plus 8 is 78. Brrrp. Shortcut one is where we wrote, read this confusing stuff. I think this might tie into the scary puzzle that I'm struggling with, but I, because but I don't understand it either, so that's a rough start. <laughs> the spacing isn't consistent in the final area. We are like double or triple space, not in a hotel. There's a lot of like, there's a few double spaces and a lot of like, maybe, maybe triple spaces. Definitely just a lot of spaces in general happening at the bottom that wasn't happening throughout the rest. Inconsistent capitalization in the four. There's definitely grammatical errors throughout. On some level, there's a concern that I might be the person that's out the window, except... 
Didn't we confirm the person that fell out the window was a the mannequin? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so maybe it's time to dig all dig deep into the scripts. Oh, it's inconsistent. Annoying. Page 2, 6, 12, 18, 25, 49, 57, 85, and 91 of the third eye. It's the ones I just went through. So these are snippets of a chat of a a book or screenplay. Probably a screenplay. Yeah, interior theater day is how you write a screenplay. Smoke lies thick in the small tawdry theater. On the hardwood stage, a magician performs. His coat is worn and mended, but once it was expensive. Lorenzo the Great. But alas, the young mademoiselle, Henrietta Dubois, could not... Is it Dubois or Dubois? I've heard both in different contexts, so I think they're both right, depending on the cultural context and country, basically. Could not escape her sordid fate. He yanks the handle to his <laughs> erythrotrope, and a silhouette of a man stabbing a woman appears on the wall. The crowd stares dumbly at the shadow, and they smile with yellow teeth made for biting. Strange way to describe a crowd. Lorenzo looks at the audience with disgust. He takes out another wheel labeled the third eye for brotherhood use only. He hesitates but puts the wheel in the contraption. The next story is not meant for the likes of you. It's something I normally only show refined ladies and gentlemen, but I'll make an exception tonight. Those tired, ugly eyes of yours shall see something new. Lorenzo yanks the handle. Thousands of years ago, the third eye shone over the islands in the far east, but one night it fell from the sky. A comet passes on the wall. Strangely enough, it quiets the, down the crowd. They follow the comet while gaping and see it crash to the ground. A human found it. And when she held it, she saw the magic of this world. She had a vision. So she painted a creature in red ochre on the cave wall. Cave paintings show up all over the wall. The crowd is a bit confused by the effect. At night... The crimson beast awoke. It spread chaos and death and devoured the human and her people. The red monster appears. The crowd screams in terror as it attacks them. Some of them have had enough and flee the theater. Lorenzo slows down. The beast disappears. The story of the red creature became a legend, but the, thir the third eye lived on and appears in the most unlikely of places to this day. That is all for tonight. You have been a wonderful audience. Go away. The crowd mutters and leaves. One man, better dressed and cleaner than the rest, remains in his seat. He studies Lorenzo with his cold eyes. Brother, brother Tertius. When Lorenzo discovers his presence, his pupils dilate from fear. I imagine it's one of the Quiz Brothers. Page six. That was way too long to be one page. For all I know, there's no, there's nothing that happened between these pages. That was just four pages long or something. <laughs> Brotherhood Lodge, night. The room is dark, besides the many lit brass candelabras. Lorenzo stands with his hat in hand. Fifty men in robes watch him from a long table. At the end of the table, a stern old man ponderously strokes his sideburns. Brother Septimus. A young brother opens a mahogany case and takes out an ornate revolver and a minotaur mask. He looks over at Brother Septimus, who nods to him. The young brother puts on the mask and aims the gun at Lorenzo's head. Play safe and never pass. Gamble to pass or perish. Truth above all, risk my life, brother. How many were our first ancient brothers? 
Seven. Correct. The seated brothers raise their goblets and drink. What is the punishment for sharing our secrets with outsiders? Lorenzo grabs hold of the table and is about to faint. Death. Correct. Lorenzo closes his eyes, but death does not come. Under normal circumstances, you would be dead now. I'm sorry, elder brother. I was not thinking. Weariness and perhaps a crisis of faith. Forgive me, brothers. Thankfully for you, these are not normal circumstances. The time is nigh, little brother. And like in the old, we shall send seven brothers in search of that which was lost. Mm, the seven brothers we heard about from the, the letters, I believe. So the reason why he was afraid of Septimus showing up in the audience is because Lorenzo told the story of this cult in his play. And the people, and he wasn't allowed to do that. But a difference, and so they, he could have killed, been killed for doing that. All brothers hold up seven fingers. Six have already gone searching for omens. You will be the seventh, the disgraced one. Where will you send me, elder brother? Augenwaldberg. There lives an artist in an old manor. The prophecy mentions her. Go and see, brother, if that which was lost is there. So I live here. This is my house? Not. It's not... It's not... It wasn't, uh... The madman's house? Nero? There we go. Lorenzo nods. The lady suffers from an eye condition that will ultimately render blindness. A sad fate for a painter. Take these vermilion tears. Oh. Okay. Okay. I get it. That's why the game is stylized in such a confusing way. Huh. So we're essentially navigating this place based on memory or something. Yeah. Everything's memory unlocked, left and right. Everything that we read, we recall based on our photographic memory. Like we're encountering and remembering various books that we've already read and we have perfect recall of them, but we can't read them because we're blind, aren't we? That's why the environment is rendered incomplete, because it's the, our, our, our memory of where the walls would be, basically. Huh. Even the things that we get interrogated by the Maze Man are all places we, that we've been to in our past. And the most, the most vivid visuals that are complete are places that aren't real. Like, this manor is presumably the real world, and it's incomplete and based on memory, but then... Because we're navigating in real time, but then... When we go to other abstractions, like the Red Maze... We, we have that place in its completeness. Because she made the red maze, and she and it's her own invention. And when she goes there, it's not real, so she imagines it in a complete form. And she, ha and she spent so much time on it that she has it all, like, photographically memorized compared to her house. That's like, ah, the walls are here, there's some stuff here. Take these vermilion tears. What do they do, elder brother? Nothing at all. But you will use them, pretending to cure the lady. That is your guise while you search her house for the third eye. Now that I've got a right eye, I'm thinking about how, like, maybe I get a left eye and a right eye, and maybe even also a third eye. Like, actually. At the very least, the right eye suggests that I get a left eye. The question is, from who? Maybe the old lady? Except the old lady, I think, is me. And now, all the more, I think that she's literally me right now. Like, she's me who is currently blind and bedridden and we're navigating this place on memory and that's why we can't leave is because this is the limited space of this like sort of story for us exterior 
Augenwaldberg Manor, dust. Hooves clop. Uh, hooves, hooves clop echo. Oh, hooves clop echoes as in clop is the verb. Like they, the clop, they're clopping echoes, not. So the tenses just felt weird when I didn't get the word flow right. Hooves clop echoes through the dilapidated courtyard. Algae covered statues silently await the arrival. A pale, sickly horse comes into view, pulling a wagon painted red in a distant past. Lorenzo walks beside the horse and leads it by its reins. Lorenzo ties the horse to an old oak. Be brave, Moors. You have nothing to fear. I take it Lorenzo is the magician, because there's even the... Yeah, there's the... We need a, we need a ticket for his wagon. He's the, We've had that name in the game all, all along. But Moors is one of the four horses. Lorenzo carefully approaches the front gate. He bangs the knocker. Lorenzo scans the dirty windows for any sign of life. Finally, the door creaks open, and instantly Lorenzo raises his top hat and takes a bow. A white rose appears in his hand from his hat. The miracle has arrived. An ashen woman in an expensive dress stares through him with milky eyes. Renata Schwarzwald. Am I Lorelei or Renata? Is the question right now? I don't know. I do not believe in miracles. That is why you need one, Baronin. Lorenzo hands the white rose to Renata. It changes color to red. You might as well perform for the shadows. My sight is fading away. Your eyes are fading. Because there has been nothing to see. Weary eyes need entertainment and tired souls need miracles. Who are you? Lorenzo the Great, at your service, Baronin. A magus whose eye, who, or magus, I don't remember, whose name is whispered from the shores of Zanzibar to the frosty peaks of Helsinki. Known to beggars and kings alike. Well, you are not known to me. Good evening. Renate is about to show, shut the gate. Wait! Renate waits. My journey has been a long one. My horse is tired, and to be honest, so am I. Renate looks at the very sickly looking horse. I had four once, during better times. But ironically, Moore's is the only one who lives. I think Moore's is death, so it's funny that the death horse is alive and all the other ones died instead. Very well. Interior, Augenwaldberg Manor, dining room day. An oversized dead goose lies on the oaken dining table. Lorenzo devours his portion in a loud manner. Renate tries to hide her disgust. Is the room satisfactory? Yes, I slept like a piglet. So it was not you I heard last night. Lorenzo drinks wine and coughs to buy some time. Uh, he was snooping around the house and got caught. I was up briefly, yes. He takes out a small vial from his sleeve. My vermilion tears. They need moonlight not to lose their magic. I took the liberty to use one of the windows in your studio. Renate looks amused. I took another liberty and studied some of your work. The portraits are of course excellent, but I am most intrigued by the drawings of... Signs? My hymnoscorpa, sweet. What inspired them? Magician, may I ask you a strange question? Who am I to refuse an answer? Did you see a labyrinth while you were in the park? A labyrinth? A red labyrinth. The only labyrinth I saw was the portrait of the man with a labyrinth instead of a face. Renata stands up angrily. I've made so much, no such portrait. Your lies have ceased to amuse me. I know why you are here and I know where you, you to look for it. But I will hold you, but I will hold you to your word. 
Lorenzo looks like he's about to assure Renate of his pure intentions. Cure my eyes. Mm. So she claims that she did not build uh, the red man. The, not the red man. <laughs> That's the maze man. Which raises questions about where the hell the, the maze man came from then. Like it's like he's his own entity. Interior. Renate's bedroom. Day. The curtains have been drawn. Renate, Renate, uh, Renate lies on top of the bed. A trace of a smirk on her lips. Lorenzo looks gravely serious on the side of the bed. Are you ready for your miracle, Baronin? Yes. Lorenzo spills a single drop of a million tears into Renate's left eye. She blinks. Lorenzo drops another tear into her right eye. It might take a few days before it takes effect. Renate's eyes start to boil, and she screams in unfiltered agony. Lorenzo backs away in horror. Lorenzo holds his hands over his ears to protect himself against her looping, deafening screams. Everything turns black. It's just... It's just eye drops. It's just eye drops. It's just eye drops. Then, quiet. Lorenzo stirs to life on the floor. She sees he sees Renate lying lifeless on the bed. Lorenzo checks her pulse in a hurry. She's still alive. Apparently, he has, at some point, put a bandage around her head. Two red dots mark the eyes, giving Renate a disturbing appearance. Baronin, can you hear me? I can hear you, magician. They tell me you are not invited. Invited where? To the cavern. I followed the echoes of my screams. They were waiting for me. Who was waiting for you? Our ancient sisters and brothers in the far east. They're sharing the secret with me. But they won't share it with you. The cavemen think you are an obsequious ignoramus for who balters through existence. Baronin, you must rest now. The labyrinth. They drew it on the wall. Go and see by the window. They say I should defenestrate you. But we have an agreement. Lorenzo slowly trudges against the window. Moonlight shines on his weather-bitten face. He looks out the window. A giant garden labyrinth has appeared in the park. Do you see it, magician? Yes. Do you see me? In the labyrinth. Lorenzo squints. It's very dark. Yes. I see you. Do you see... You. What do you mean? Can you see yourself in the labyrinth? Of course not. I'm not there. Neither am I. Lorenzo turns around and bumps into Renate. The red dots on the bandages have grown substantially, looking like giant red bug eyes. She puts her hand on Lorenzo's face. The room turns red. Hello. Interior, garden labyrinth, night. Lorenzo gasps in disorientation. He is now somewhere in the labyrinth. Lorenzo quivers from fear. Renate smiles at him. Her bandage is gone. And a pair of lovely hazel eyes look at Lorenzo with affection. This is the place from my childhood. I am over there. Renate points behind Lorenzo. He turns his head to look. A girl wearing an owl mask watches him from behind. Owl girl. She runs and disappears around a corner. Renate takes, Le takes Lorenzo's hand. Come. Together they run in the labyrinth. Renate seems to know her way, while Lorenzo is trying to make sense of the strange space. A red hue suddenly appears on their faces. It's the most beautiful thing they have ever seen. They smile with tears running down their cheeks. 
the light grows stronger and the cosmos plays music just for them. Damn, this was really straightforward and concrete and then literally the exact second that the uh, the eye drops are used, it goes completely off the rails. The fucking vermilion tears just drove things crazy. Let's see. I both want a drink and a chance to scan some of this again. We're not just seems to know their way. So she lost her bandages, she suddenly had eyes again that could see, and she's looking around and interacting. Page 49. Twice as far into the book all of a sudden. I don't know if that one is that long, but it did feel, that, that did feel like a pretty long chapter. Or, or section. Augenwaldburg Manor. Library. Day. Renate's hand moves frantically across a canvas. Lorenzo sits in an armchair by the window, with his top hat on his knee, posing for a portrait. There is movement inside his top hat. I think it may have been a maze. Not a labyrinth. Aren't they interchangeable? A labyrinth prolongs the path, while a maze is for getting lost, and we are lost. It's a big house. It can sometimes be disorienting. We have seen it. I think the price of admission might be an eye and a leg. Lorenzo leans forward. His hat falls on the floor. A red owl flutters out of the hat in front of Lorenzo. He stares at it in surprise. That was a very clever trick. The owl perches on top of the bookshelf. When the third eye blinked, the red beast laid an egg within. The third eye closed, and their bastard offspring was born thousands of years later. Renate studies her canvas and is a bit confused. A realistic portrait of a man in a dark suit. But where his head is supposed to be, there's a red glowing maze. Renata notices two tickets in his hand. She takes them and stares at them. Teatro. Teatro Rosso. We're looking for tickets. Theater. Night. An excited, faceless valet points at a red curtain. Lorenzo and Renata look at each other and then step through it. Rows and rows of seats. It's much too large to be inside the manor. Lorenzo stares in disbelief at the giant theater. It seems empty, but the murmuring from the crowd is deafening. Gaslight illuminates the stage. Someone clears his throat behind them, and a featureless usher points towards the first rows. Renate and Lorenzo uh, silently descend the stairs towards their seats. A fanfare. The lights dim. A man dressed as Lorenzo and wearing a Lorenzo mask rides a prop horse onto the stage. What is this? Lorenzo, quote unquote, knocks on a door mid stage, and an actress wearing a mask resembling Renate opens the door. Applause. The light intensifies on stage and blinds Lorenzo and Renate. On the stage, a comet hanging from wires passes. Renate and Lorenzo avert their eyes, then the comet is gone. The stage is empty. A lone, hesitant clap from somewhere further back. The actress playing Renate walks on stage. She holds her hands in front of her, blood flowing from her eyes. Please, hold me. The actor playing Lorenzo steps on stage purposefully. Lorenzo and Renate watch their theater alter egos on stage in grim silence. Their hands join. Lorenzo, quote-unquote, drags a stylized prop window onto the stage. Renate, quote-unquote, wanders sobbing blood. Wanders sobbing blood. Lorenzo tries to place the window in front of Renate, making her fall out. The crowd howls with laughter as Lorenzo gets more frustrated every time Renate misses the window. Please hold me. Please hold me. 
Finally, quote-unquote, Lorenzo has enough. He grabs Renate and shoves her with full force of the glass window from the stage. Renate lands with a thud and a crack. Theater blood squirts into Lorenzo's face. Lorenzo forms a fist. The real Loren Oh. Theater blood squirts in the real Lorenzo's face. Lorenzo forms a fist and rises. Enough! Fake Lorenzo watches him silently. The whole theater... The whole theater boo. Let's go. But Renate is gone from her seat. In fact, she's nowhere to be found. Lorenzo looks around in a panic, but it's like she's vanished into thin air. The actress turns, uh, the actress playing Renate comes back to life and is elevated by strings into the air. She bows and receives applause. The actress turns her head to Lorenzo. And she takes off the Renate mask. Beneath it is a featureless face. To be gifted is to be infested. Ideas are tiny red eggs in your brain. To the microscope, they still look the same. The good and the bad. Oh, but look at the time. Lorenzo slowly walks off stage, his footsteps echoing through the empty theater. He moves towards Lorenzo. Lorenzo turns to run, but his doppelganger catches up with him. The doppelganger removes the mask and behind it, Maze Man, his head buzzing in an electrical manner. She is waiting for you. Here is an idea. Follow my daughter. The Maze Man puts his hand over Lorenzo's eyes. Well. Now we're even having the layered fiction within the fiction, which is what we've been dealing with. Like, we're within... We might not be. We not. We might not be in a fictional setting. We might just be in in a, set, a situation where it's us experiencing this place while being blind. But we are. We might be imagining a younger version of ourselves still doing non-literal things, especially if this guy was dead the whole time. So we, we one way or another, we have fiction within fiction because the games exist and so on, and the stories, and they're having fiction within fiction. Where like the people inside the story are in, themselves encountering yet another layer of abstraction about their own stories. Interior, Augenwaldburg Manor, Corridor, Day. A disoriented Lorenzo finds himself in the hotel corridor. A phone rings somewhere, further down the hall. He sees the owl girl. Where is she? The girl flaps her arms and hoots. Enough games. The owl girl disappears down a, co a corner. Lorenzo st uh, stops after St Lorenzo stomps after. The owl girl waits for him at the end of the next corridor. Suddenly, a black Labrador runs up to him and barks. Lorenzo looks at the door with surprise. Th that the dog with surprise. His tag reads Rudy. Rudy lies down and plays dead on the rug. As he does, Rudy changes from black to white. Finally, the dog cramps and then contorts into a cat. A payphone rings on the wall. Lorenzo lifts the receiver. So Lorenzo's just been stuck in a completely non-literal, weird, subjective space where shit like that happens ever since the die drops, basically. Why are you answering the phone? Lorenzo remains quiet. There are no phones in 1847, you cretino. Lorenzo grunts. Hang up the phone and go chase the owl girl, just like the script says. So this could be him then because he's always writing the scripts so whenever we talk about it being a certain year it's role play not time travel the way that I thought might happen one day there is there is definitely year stuff happening like we're having like here Lorenzo's being enforced on how to role play Lorenzo hangs up he sees the owl girl with a limp cat in her hand Lorenzo runs after her, corridor after corridor. Lorenzo runs fast with determination, but the owl girl is always around yet another corner. He never catches up with her. Lorenzo turns a corner. There is no owl girl, but a mirror. Lorenzo sees himself briefly, and behind him stands a man in sunglasses and a dark suit. Lorenzo regards the man in the mirror, but the mirror changes, and Renate appears. 
levitating like a ghost. Stylish sunglasses obscure her eyes. Renate with a man's voice. I am I am waiting for you upstairs. I looked serious, so you might want to go check. That's still a wild line. He said when he said it before. Like referring to somebody else waiting for you and they look serious. Like you better you better deal with it. Like it's the level of urgency that is somebody else would be described in. But he's describing himself. It's such a strange thing. Except now he's now now it is somebody else describing him, but still saying I in his voice. Renate vanishes from the mirror. Lorenzo is left with the image of himself. He looks weary. He turns and goes. His footsteps echo through the empty hotel. Manor. Hmm. The discrepancy of whether or not it's a hotel or a manor. It feels like they went into the back rooms in House of Leaves and they just never found their way back out. An increasingly surreal thing started happening instead. Although even in House of Leaves, it starts affecting the, the building itself, too. Final one. Interior. Augenwaldburg Manor. Staircase. Second floor corridor. Night. At the end of the dark hallway, Lorenzo sees a dark shape. Lorenzo very slowly approaches it. It's Renate, with her back turned against him. Lorenzo stops. A long silence. Renate in a man's voice. You keep sending the wrong goose to the butcher. Baronin? Baronin? I think the Baronin would perhaps hear talk about her ascension, but she can say something to the effect of Renate clears her throat. I have good news for you. We are not artists. We are not even art. When it comes down to it, we are all just paint. Aren't you happy with this news, magician? Renate switches voice again. And he would say. Lorenzo keeps his silence in defiance. Why is this so hard for you? Why do you think of these things? This is unimportant. There are symbolic values and mirror images, yes, but none of this matters, Signorina. Have you heard? Have you read my? Had you read my manifesto, you would never have. You would have known it was never meant for viewing. Lorenzo looks confused for a moment. Please, Baronin, let's leave this place. Every maze has a solution. Renate, Renate sighs heavily. You really understand nothing at all. But if you understand. You would never have played your part. Time for entertainment. Here is her last performance. Renate turns slowly around. His, her face is hidden by shadows. Lorenzo takes a step forward. Her eyes are, hem are empty craters. Red paint runs down her cheeks. Hold me. Please hold me. Lorenzo backs away. Please hold me. Please hold me. Lorenzo backs further, Renate's arms flailing, searching for him like tentacles. Paint dripping everywhere she goes. Please hold me. Lorenzo's eyes widen with fear as she comes closer. Her touch disgusts him. Suddenly, Renate increases her pace and she touches his face. Please, hold me. Lorenzo instinctively pushes Renate with full force. Smiling, she falls toward the red, the large window. The Baronin crashes through it and down to the ground be below. Lorenzo stares at the window in shock. He steps towards the window. Rain patters against his face. On the gravel path below lies a mangled corpse. Hmm... Another version of the person falling out the window. Someone falling out the window kept happening. Uh, in With us, Nero threw a mannequin out the window, and we saw that happen from our perspective. Assuming that's us. But then Renate, who seems to be both of them or something, 
was knocked out the window by Lorenzo after he himself saw a play about himself knocking Renate out the window. We've had three times it's happened and one of them is true. Or at least in its own story was a thing that happened and not a fake... Not a, not a play or a fake body. That was a big old chunk of story right there. We even had a reference. We had a reference to the, t the tickets. We have more names involved. Lorenzo, Renate, Nero, Lorelai. Okay. Hmm. Her talking like that is interesting because it suggests that we're essentially imagining Nero. Like Nero might have been tr Nero might have been real at some point, but then he died. He probably was abusive and scary at some point, but also at this point, he's no longer around, and so it seems like probably Renate is in bed and she's currently imagining Lorelai and Nero as these two characters working on this art project essentially but I as Lorelai am realizing that Nero's not alive I don't even know if I'm Lorelai though I'm just trying to list us as different characters so I can even talk about us at this point definitely something going on here 69 hey yeah. after being sucked into all that though and now I'm like what am I doing <laughs> plot came at us hard and now I'm like disoriented about like uh puzzles 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 yes I remember puzzles from the puzzle game obviously 15 out of 20 shortcuts and I think two of them are ones I've given up on so there's three more to discover still less than halfway through the quiz club and most of the other numbers here don't indicate meaningful progress because they're just how many dollars you got, bud. I'll probably just start putting all my money in the gachapon thing soon because I don't know what else to do with these for the most part. The red eye, the right eye, strangely made its own way out of an eye socket of a skeleton in a room 1963. Bleh. Ah, fuck. <laughs> that was sudden. Strangely made its own way out of an eye socket of a skeleton in a room 1963. A stone-like object with an unnatural cerise glow. It feels magnetic, yet numb and electrical. It gives off a constant low-frequency noise, which causes it to vibrate slightly. Judging from the stone's strange characteristics, it's likely created from a spec from spectral information, making it an illusion object. Objects that like these exist between realities and are particularly interesting if they are objects related to human body parts. This can mean they are directly related to the human soul or dreams. Eye-related illusion objects usually come in pairs, and if inserted into sockets in parallel dimensions or dreams, they can reveal new and significant knowledge to the owner. <coughs> Insert it into sockets in parallel dimensions or dreams. So, like, you get both eyes, and then you put one in this world and one in the other one, essentially. In similar locations or something. Is there anything to draw from talking to this woman, I wonder? Electronic Art Symposium Photo Collages Cafe Mother Her Sister Her Father Pytoff's Band Name and Telex Yuna's Project Renate He's not reacting In the telex. 
I don't know what to parse about what she's saying still. Alright, well, I did get a new phone number. Let's not forget about that. Before it becomes too late. Need to figure out that clock. Need to figure out the moon diary. The game does keep track of things. Although not in a helpful order. They're in the order that we found out about them in, but they're not... Uh, they don't sort by solved and unsolved, unfortunately. So unlock the caravan is 15 pages in. Still need to find a ticket for that. This is all gone. That's good. Oh, that's oh, astronomical clock. That's the one I just walked by. So that's one of the things that we still need to, that's pretty old now. Unlock the journal. That's our third oldest objective. Bug report two. Yeah, I don't, that's the scary puzzle. Find video cassettes because there was a TV that presumably can play them. Help the old woman see. Hmm. I assume I need to figure out what to say to her first, right? Because it's not letting me, uh... It's not prompting me to give her the eye. Okay, there's a few entire pages that are completed, which feels good. East, three-letter lock. That's the lock with the woman on it. The dead woman. Unlock room 1973. Log into the supercomputer. Code for exhibition key bad. So there's a, there's a very large number in the backyard. I don't remember what the requirement was to lock into the, the supercomputer. I should probably review the requirements for that. Yeah, there's four different card doors. The center of the maze. We have a center of the maze in our backyard and the center of our maze that's in the dream dimension also. Reach the center of the quiz club, which is just the same maze again, but with guys that shoot you if you don't know trivia. <laughs> Card doors. Three graves by the mausoleum. I don't know the code or how to interact with those yet. Maybe the eye, actually. Room 1982. The revolver door. <coughs> ah. We have two reasons to call. So let's let's look into calling him about the skeleton, because he's supposed to be his own body. Okay. Did I write down his phone number anywhere? I don't remember how to call him specifically. I need a drink, sorry. <clears throat> okay, uh, was it on note? Probably. If it's a note, it's one that I haven't thought about for a long time. I have not called him for a long time. All the doors are here. There's your 10 spots. They're in, they're somewhat indicative of what was inside the room. It, was, it might even be the layout of the 10 things you're comparing. Yeah, it looks like it might be. Like the shape of the room is incorporated into the door itself. It's interesting. Uh, they were nice enough to put these in here. I guess I didn't have to dedicate an entire page to writing them down. This is error one for part two. Went and found that on my own. 
Man, I don't remember how to call him. I haven't done that forever. I haven't, I haven't done it for so long. I'm not great at names. Renzo Nero. So Nero's his last name, Renzo's his first name. His name is Renzo Nero, but then there's the great Lorenzo, which is somebody else. So these people's names are a mess and kind of sound fake. Like they're all combinations of each other or something. It should be our Nero. And I looked for Nero and he's not in here either. I'm so sorry, everyone. I've just, I've, I've, I don't remember how to call him. I thought you would just, let, you, wouldn't you just pick up the phone to call him? Is there a different phone for calling him specifically? I wonder. Oh, maybe the front desk, right? There's no phone here, is there? Huh. I'll have to look into it or ask someone or something, I think, just as a reminder. I'm like, hey, how do you actually call him specifically? All right, well, let's call the coffee number. That's what I wrote down as being. I think it was the espresso club or something. I forget exactly what he called it at the time, but I wrote down the number at least. All the way back when we first got to the cafe. You have called the Black Arts Coffee Club. You are calling about the membership. You want to become a member. You want unlimited coffee. You want to pay 10 American dollars. Yes. Yes, your money will transfer via the astral plane. Yes, focus on the membership. Think about the espresso. Focus on the espresso cup. Espresso cup. See the espresso cup before you. Now, the espresso cup. The espresso cup is in your bag. Absurd. Yes, you will enjoy unlimited espresso. You will forget everything about the Black Arts Coffee Club. Forget everything about the Black Arts Coffee Club. Forget the Black Arts Coffee Club. Whoa, I think I forgot the Black Arts Coffee Club. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? So, I just have a magic coffee cup now. So I guess now I can just get espresso whenever I want from any of those machines, and I guess it said that I draw, will run faster, or maybe it does something else weird in the process. Uh, but I imagine that will make me, make me need to pee. So I get to deal with that, potentially. <laughs> Not sure if it's worth it, but it'd be funny to just poke at it and see what it does. For all I know, it might unlock something important somehow. Espresso cup. Appeared inexplicably after a mysterious telephone call, made of porcelain. Under the cup there is an, an embossing of a symbol depicting a film camera. In its lens, the number three. Below it is the text, Mensa del Personal. It is embossed in a small sans serif text. The cup is a common mid-fifties Italian design, often used in larger canteens. The method of how it appeared is, however, noteworthy, spontaneous presence, an anomaly in which an object appears near a person or place with strong links to the history of the object. 
is presumably a magic trick utilizing mentalism in which the audience is led to believe the object is appearing was not there in the first place. If I believe you, you're suggesting that I just paid $10 for a coffee cup that was already in my bag. <laughs> and they're like, whoa, it just appeared. They're like tricking you into thinking it's new. See, I also noticed that it's like... For the coffee club, it tells me the phone number, but for calling about the skeleton, it just says, Yo, use the phone. The phone is ringing. Oh, 1963. It's a hotel, so you type the, the room number in instead of a phone number. Right? Pronto. Ah, Signorina. Do you have sweet music for my ears? Inform about the skeleton. I was not in there. What a delicious mystery you are cooking for us, Signorina. I think we must try to think about this mystery in a less worldly way. This is how the snake caught the golden egg, after all. Now, if I am not in the space, 1963, perhaps I am in the time, 1963. You are getting closer to the truth, Signorina. Was that all, Signorina? Ask for advice. Let your heart be filled by the mystic. Did you have anything else in your mind? <laughs> no. It will come, Signorina. Arrivederci. We had a whole story that was about the cave. They're in, the people of the cave don't want you. You're not allowed. You're not. You're not invited. That whole thing that was happening. What stands out to me about that as being odd, or what stood out is like me wondering what's going to happen there, is that I think that the person in the tent or the crystal ball in the tent is me in a cave, and I take instruction and I need to put give directions on how to navigate the cave blindly. So I was hoping that that story would give me some kind of directions. I don't, I don't know if I, if I really wanted it to break the fourth wall and do one of those really, those really cheesy uh, riddles where it's like, Ah, you went, see, the, the, they got in the ship and they went north two miles until they hit this island where they went west three miles. Like that, that. But like, given that the format of the puzzle, I kind of thought something like that, like that might happen in, in that story when we were reading all those scripts. But the cave came and went and I don't think it functionally had a clue. But it's worth reviewing if I can't come up with anything else. Same thing for the chapter that mentioned tickets. Because I'm looking for tickets to get into Lorenzo's... Into Lorenzo's wagon. But even that... But I th don't think that... Section gave me anything actionable either. I suppose we'll see. Mm -hmm.